Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 41 to 45. So first I'll show you guys the questions so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 41, 42, 43, 44, and 45. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 41, we're asked which of the following organs would be expected to have the largest number of desmosomes. So we have some organs given, which one would have the largest number of desmosomes. So what desmosomes are, are these junctions between cells that are very tight. So they're, they're connections between cells that hold cells very tightly together. They actually go through the different cytoskeletons of the cells and adhere them very closely to each other. So desmosomes would be present in an organ which has cells that really need to stick closely together. And that would be because maybe there's a lot of mechanical stress going on. So a lot of moving around and therefore it's important that the cells stick close together. Otherwise, because of the stress, maybe they might be pulled apart and that would be detrimental to the function of the organ. So the organ which has the most stress will be the one in which we, the most mechanical stress is the one in which we expect the large number of desmosomes. And that would end up being the heart because the heart has a lot of pumping that it has to do. And there's a lot of movement in the cells of the heart. Whereas the liver, it doesn't really move its cells around mechanically that much. Neither does the spleen and neither does the kidney. So the heart is the one which we expect the largest number of desmosomes to be present. In question 42, it says lysozymes are a collection of enzymes which function by attacking peptidoglycans and hydrolyzing the glycosidic bond that connects N-acetylmuramic acid with the fourth carbon of N-acetylglucosamic glucosamine. Infants receive lysozyme through breastfeeding, but if an infant formula is used to feed the child instead, what complications might be expected to rise? So all we really need to know here is that lysozymes, they attack peptidoglycans, and you don't really need to know like which bond they specifically attack. So sometimes questions will give you extra information to kind of throw you off, make you think that's a harder question than it actually is. But you just need to know lysozymes attack peptidoglycans. You should also know from your knowledge of biology that peptidoglycans are present in bacteria and not in animal cell walls. And so this is something which can help us fend off bacterial attacks. And so it's important for the immune system of a healthy child. But now, you are receiving infant formula, meaning you're not getting lysozymes from breast milk, what is expected to rise. So you no longer have enough of an enzyme that protects you against bacterial attacks. So the logical assumption here is that you're more prone to being infested by bacteria. So we're looking for something that is bacteria related. Option A is saying you are increased you're expected to have an increased likelihood of chickenpox if the child is not vaccinated. And that is incorrect because this question also requires you to have kind of an understanding of some different diseases in biology. And so you should know that chickenpox is a viral infection. So it's because of a virus and not a bacteria. Digestive problems, it's not really fully clear how, how like not having an antibacterial enzyme will lead specifically to digestive problems. That's too specific an answer, and we don't have enough evidence in the question stem to back it up. So like digestive problems possibly, but if there's a stronger answer with a more direct link, that would be better. And C is correct. Increased susceptibility to salmonella, which is caused by a bacteria, and this is a pretty well-known and common bacterial infection, and so this is the correct answer here. You can't protect yourself against bacteria and salmonella is due to bacteria so yeah this is an assumption that we can actually make and d none of the above that's incorrect no we can actually we can logically assume that c makes sense so c is the correct answer here in question 43 it says the fluid released by the renal glomerulus and collected by the bowman's capsule is most similar in composition to which of the following fluids so we have a fluid released by the glomerulus collected by the Bowman's capsule, which one is that similar to? So to another type of fluid. So the glomerulus, that is the collection of capillaries 
that go through the nephrons of where the kidneys are and the nephrons that are inside the kidneys. So there is whole blood flowing through the kidneys, sorry, through the glomerulus, and then that is collected in the Bowman's capsule. What is the Bowman's capsule? It is part of the nephron that collects the, the filtrate coming out from the kidneys and it collects liquid from the the capillaries of the glomerulus and some solutes in there as well, such as glucose and salts that are dissolved, but specifically larger objects such as red blood cells and proteins are not able to get out of the glomerulus and be collected in the kidneys. So we're looking for a fluid that is similar to that. So it's kind of like the filtrate from the blood. And this is released from the capillaries due to hydrostatic pressure. So the pressure is kind of forcing the liquid from the capillaries into the Bowman's capsule. But because of the pore size, things like red blood cells and proteins are not also filtrated. So option A is saying urine. That would be incorrect. Urine is the most concentrated form of this filtrate that is created at the end of the nephron. And we're talking about the filtrate that's first collected at the beginning of the nephron. So this would be incorrect. Option B is saying whole blood. No, it wouldn't really be most similar to whole blood because whole blood actually does contain the red blood cells and proteins and other large substances that are present in blood, which are not filtrated into this initial filtrate in the nephron. So no, that would be incorrect. Saliva would also be incorrect because saliva also contains a different composition of things that are present in this fluid, such as enzymes that are present in saliva that are definitely not present in this filtrate. So that would also not be really similar. But D, interstitial fluid, is correct. So interstitial fluid is the fluid that is present in between different cells, and its source is that it comes out of blood vessels, and it's also similarly pushed out of blood vessels due to hydrostatic pressure. But once it comes out of these blood vessels, really the only things that can pass through are the liquid and some small solutes, but not larger solutes like red blood cells and proteins. Those are not able to be pushed out of the blood vessels due to hydrostatic pressure, and they're, they're just they're pushed out because of them actually being able to pass through the pores. And this is very similar to what's going on in the glomerulus and the, the Bowman's capsule. So interstitial fluid, the fluid that is surrounding cells, so present in between cells, that is pretty similar to what's going on in this filtrate that happens in the beginning of the nephron. Option 44 is saying plasma cells are differentiated what? So plasma cells, you should know that these are the mature form of B cells. So option A is correct. This just relies on your understanding of the different types of cells in the immune system. And knowing that B cells, they their function is to bind to different antigens. And then when they are actually selected, that that's the, the, the type of antigen and the antibody that we require. And they're sig signaled by T cells and they mature into their mature form, which is called plasma cells or plasma B cells, and their function is to release a lot of antibodies. So that is the mature form of B cells. They're called plasma cells. T cells, they have a different function. They're cytotoxic P cell, T cells, and then also helper T cells. So these are different cells. Not They're not plasma cells. NK cells, they're kind of similar to the cytotoxic T cells, but once again, they're different from plasma cells. Monocytes, they can be macrophages. They're different from plasma cells. So just knowing the different components of the immune system, you should know that the mature form of B cells are called plasma cells. In question 45, it says a child is born with an extra chromosome in each of its cells. This condition is usually the result of what? So someone is born with an extra chromosome. It's the result of what type of, type of uh, term in meiosis? Option A is saying non-disjunction. And yes, this is correct. So here is... A representation of non-disjunction. What that is, is in meiosis, when sister chromatids, they fail to properly segregate, that is when you have non-disjunction. So over here on the left side, you can see proper splitting of the sister chromatids. You had one over, like you had two sister chromatids over here, and each of the daughter cells got one of them, and then those are duplicated properly, and they match properly with this other zygote, and you have the correct amount of each chromosome in the daughter chromatids, sorry, in the daughter cells. But over here, these two sister chromatids, they all went over here to the left. None went 
to the cell on the right, and therefore it did not receive a copy of that chromosome. And when we get to the final daughter chromatids, or sorry, the daughter cells, when we get to the final daughter cells, we see that the one on the left has an extra copy of that red chromosome, whereas the one on the right did not even receive a copy of that chromosome. And that is how this one on the left has three copies, and that's more copies than it should have. And then that's going to continue to be propagated when mitosis occurs and all of the daughter cells resulting from that final zygote. So, therefore, non-disjunction, this event in which sister chromatids don't properly se separate, that is what leads to an extra chromosome or not enough chromosomes being present in a cell. So that's non-disjunction. Problematic crossing over, no, that is not what took place. So crossing over is when you have exchange of genetic material between non-sister chromatids, but that wouldn't lead to an actual complete change in number of a chromosome. That just leads to changing of, exchanging of genetic material. So no, that's not what would lead to it. C segregation is actually when we do have separation of the sister chromatids, but that would lead to proper, proper numbers of chromosomes. But we're asked for the condition that leads to the result of an extra chromosome, and that would be non-destruction. And D hybridization, not completely sure what this answer is referring to. Maybe it's referring to DNA hybridization, whereas, which is when you have single strands coming and finding their complementary strand and then annealing together and giving us a double strand. But that's not really relevant to what's going on here. That's not really something that happens in meiosis. And we're looking for a term that's related to meiosis, which leads to extra chromosomes. So once again, that would be non-disjunction. Non so A is the correct answer here. And that's it for the questions in this video. So if you enjoyed what you saw in this video, make sure to check out our course. The link is in the description below. In that course, we go through a lot more questions and break down each of the different answer options, explaining why it's correct or incorrect. So check that out in the description below. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe to this channel in order to keep up to date with the videos that we post here. That's it for the questions. In